I collected a few more Obsidian tips and tweaks for you from all across the internet and cannot wait to share them. So without much further ado, let's do this. I never thought of needing anything like this first tip, but now that I have been using it for a while, I would not want to miss it. It was shared by Reddit user Stasinari and comes in very handy if you use headings to structure your notes, like many of us do. As always, you can find the link to the original post in the description. I prepared a note with several headings on multiple levels. And as you can see, the note is fairly long. And finding a specific section requires some scrolling around. To make it easier, I usually show the notes outline in one of Obsidian's side panes. In my case, on the right hand side. You can enable this via the command palette, which you can open with Ctrl and P by default. Just search for Outline and click on Show Outline. This will open a window, and then, of course, as always in Obsidian, you can take this window and drag it wherever you want it to be. In my case, I want to have it in my right hand side pane. As you can see in my note, each heading level has a different color. Of course, this will depend on the theme that you use. But if you do use different colors per level and you like to view your notes structure as an outline, then you will notice that the outline view does not use the same colors. Now, with the CSS snippet provided by Stasinari, the link to which is also in the description, the outline will use the same colors for your headings to match them in your note. To use the snippet, we need to go to Obsidian Settings, Appearance, and scroll down to the CSS Snippets section. Click on the folder icon to open the snippets location in your file browser. Once there, create a new file. I will call it docformatting.css. You need to make sure to get the extension right. If you don't see file extensions in Windows Explorer, then just click on View, Show, and File Name Extensions. We open a new CSS file, then you can use the link in the description to get the source code, copy it from this website, paste it in here, and save it. When this is done, we can go back to Obsidian, refresh the list of CSS snippets, scroll down to find talk formatting, just switch the toggle to enable it, and right away you can see that the headings in the outline view are now using the same colors as in our actual document. And this makes the navigation through long documents simply much easier. Let's talk about housekeeping, or should I say vault keeping? <laughs> Many of us are in the habit of writing notes and linking to notes that do not exist yet. In fact, that's one of the things many Obsidian users appreciate very much. But if you're anything like me, you will end up with a bunch of links going nowhere and not going back to them for a long time. Or ever. This is where the tip from Reddit user Nashed Teeth can help. It is a data view query, the link to which is also in the description, that creates a table with a column for a link to the non-existing target file and the second column for the source node. This means where the link is placed. Now, let me demonstrate this quickly. I will just, once again, select the code from the website, copy it, go back to Obsidian. Then I create a new node here, which I will call test missing files. Now, when we are pasting the source code from the website, there are two important things to consider. First, don't forget to put the back ticks to identify a code block. This one is for a data view query. And second, when you're pasting the code from there, you need to paste it as plain text. And let's see what happens. As you can see, it finds quite a few nodes which do not exist yet. However, I can also see that a lot of these links are coming from files that actually don't really link somewhere. So for example, this markdown file, is part of my Obsidian Tips library. And of course, there's template code in here, which will never link to any actual node. So what I want to do is I want to modify this query a bit and just get rid of these links that don't really help me here. To do so, I go back into the source mode and simply add another condition here. Basically, what I say here is to exclude all the files that have the string Obsidian Tips in their file path. Now, let's see what happens now. Yeah, this looks better. So first of all, there are fewer files found, only 70 instead of 94. And second, these are actual files that I'm working with and where the target node is indeed missing. Now, from here, I can either go to the source node and edit the link or remove it if I don't need it anymore. Or 
I can simply click on the link for the missing node and then create the node right away. The same Reddit user shared another useful query with us. It also helps with keeping our vault clean, but instead of looking for missing files, it finds empty nodes. Once again, I will use the link in the description, go to the website, copy the data view code from here. Then I will create a new node, call it test empty files, add my backticks, make sure I paste the code as plain text, and then we can already switch and see what happens there. As you can see, I have currently two empty nodes in my vault, which is correct. I actually created them today for a test. So right away, I have a very useful view of nodes that are existing, but do not really have any content. It's a small thing, but it can really help with keeping the world clean and clutter free. Okay, strictly speaking, my next tip is not a tweak, but an actual plugin. However, I really wanted to share it anyway, because it is very helpful for people who use many plugins in Obsidian. While I am certainly not the user with the longest list of installed plugins, I have enough to make the loading of Obsidian slower than I would like it to be. Let me demonstrate this by closing and opening Obsidian again. From the moment I start Obsidian until it is ready to use, it takes approximately 4 seconds. Enter the plugin groups plugin. So let me go to Obsidian settings, community plugins, browse and search for it. I just install it. I will not cover all the plugins features here. Maybe this will come in a future video if you're interested, but focus on the option to delay the loading of specific plugins. To do so, I create a new plugin group and call it delay. In the group settings, we have the three tabs, general, plugins, and groups. Under general, we can do various things. The most important one for us is to say we want to load the plugins in this group on startup, and we want to have a delay of say five seconds. Now the question is, which plugins shall be delayed? This we can define on the second tab here. So here we have a list of all the installed community plugins, and we can simply check the ones that can be loaded delayed because I don't necessarily need them from the very first second. I will quickly go through those and pick some. Okay, once we have selected the ones we want to delay, I simply save these changes. And now we can see here that we have a group called delay with a startup delay of five seconds. Now, the last thing we have to do is to go to the community plugins list and disable the same plugins. So everything that we put in the group needs to be disabled in the Obsidian settings, which makes a lot of sense because Obsidian shall not load them right away, but wait, and then after the defined interval of five seconds, the plugin is going to tell Obsidian to actually load these plugins. All right, I have disabled all of those and I just remembered that I should mention one more thing if we go to the plugin settings for plugin groups and edit our just defined group. If you have plugins that depend on each other, like for example, Excalibrain requires Excalibraw to run before it can actually be loaded, then you can use the order tab here and arrange them accordingly. So in our case, I should move Excalibraw above Excalibrain so it gets loaded first. Otherwise, Excalibrain is going to throw an error when we try to load it before Excalibur. So let me see if this again. Then we can click out of the settings. I will once again close Obsidian and restart it, and we should see whether it's going to load faster or not. As you can see, it takes approximately two seconds now, which is about 50% faster. And also the delayed loading of plugins is working, as we have seen with the recent files plugin here, which initially showed as not being available, and then five seconds later, my recent files actually showed up. Personally, I find this really useful. What do you think? How do you like those tips? Which of those is your favorite? Or do you have any tweaks or tips to share with the community? Perhaps let me know and I will be happy to add them to one of the next videos. As always, I will of course credit the original poster or creator of the respective tip. Also, if you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss any of the future ones. If you want to check out my previous videos on Obsidian, take a look at this growing playlist. I add them all there. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.